Happy fall, Eagle Brook Church. It's so good to be with you this weekend, wherever you're watching from. Maybe it's at one of our Eagle Brook locations or online. Maybe you're here today in person. It is uh, good to see you. Uh, over the past uh, about month, we've been doing a series, a collection of talks around this idea of our future selves will thank us for certain things. In uh, week one, we looked at habits, and, and we, think we looked at how in the future there are some habits that we wish we would have, have practiced, and, and looking back, we'll go, man, we're grateful that we did that. We looked at relationships, temptation, and generosity. Uh, this week, uh, what I believe our future selves will thank us for is actually spending time with God. I want us to begin today's message in Ephesians chapter 5. It says this, it says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. I don't know about you, but you know, back in mid-March, uh, we were told to what? Stay in our homes for what? Two weeks, right? It's been a long two weeks, okay? Um, and we thought, man, surely they'll figure this thing out. But, you know, they didn't. And then here we are. And then it's like, you know, you're trying to figure out each person, each friend's kind of COVID rules, where they're at on that. You're wearing a mask. You're not wearing a mask. You're having birthday parties. You're homeschooled. You're, you're trying to figure that out. And then, like, so here we are seven months later, um, and we're just going, man, what, what happened with the time? Like, I, I don't know if I've made the best use of this seven months of pandemic just time. And it's kind of weird because you kind of lose track of time because you know when people start asking you stuff about like what you did last year and you're trying to remember what life was like BC before COVID and you're trying to like figure out like wait was that this that was this year like that that was like and you kind of lose track of time and and for some of us, this has been a time where we've been able to forcefully spend more time with our family. And that, that's been good. For some of us, then there's some others of us that go, this was not a good time for us to spend more time with, with family. And, and then uh, if you're single, you're like, dude, this pandemic boredom is real. The struggle is real. And whenever we find ourselves in a challenging time, our greatest temptation is to fast forward is to actually look for things to help us actually pass the time. Whatever we can do to get our minds off of our struggles, and a lot of times we will actually turn to entertainment to just help us, well, pass the time. Did you know that there is a website that will actually show you in hours and minutes the amount of time it is required to watch a full series of television? Uh, for example, if we were looking at Breaking Bad, it would take you 62 hours to watch every episode. If we were watching uh, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, hello, we, 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 it, would, it would take us about 74 hours to do the Carlton, okay? Um, if we were looking at Fixer Upper and we wanted to learn how to renovate some kitchens, it would take us 77 hours of renovated kitchens. If we wanted to laugh and, and do it with Jerry Seinfeld, it would take us 90 hours and 30 minutes. If we were watching The Office, it would be 99 hours and 30 minutes. I get the feeling that some of us have watched The Office twice just this year. <laughs> if we were watching Friends, 121 hours of television. Um, my friend said it best the other day. He said, I have gotten to the end of Netflix. It's like they scraped the corners of the streaming world and found I've seen just about everything. Yet when we get to talking about spending time with God, it's kind of like he gets our last resort. Maybe he gets our last few minutes right before we go to sleep. Now I lay me down to sleep. Lord, would you just, you know, you just... I mean, if you're a church person, maybe you've heard us use this phrase of, of seeking first the kingdom of God and putting God first in every, in every area of our lives. But if we're honest, sometimes we kind of give God our leftovers. I mean, if we're looking at statistics of just, I don't know if you pull up your, your screen time. I mean, 
Apple volunteers my screen time to me every week. I'm like, I didn't ask you for this, okay? I don't know why you sent this to me. But the average U.S. adult spends 38 minutes per day just on Facebook. If we're looking at, at young adults, 16 to 24-year-olds spend an average of three hours a day on social media. Internet users in general spend about two and a half hours per day on social networking in the last two years. <laughs> and we haven't even talked about football yet. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to fantasy football. We, ha we haven't even got... We haven't even gotten there yet. And, and here's the deal. Today's message is not cancel your Netflix subscription. Today's message is not get rid of all of your social media apps on your phone. No, it's not that. But today's message is challenging us to look, take a deep dive into our schedule and what we are giving our time to and asking this very, very important question that I believe can change our life. What has whatever we've been given the most of our time to done for us lately? I mean, when our friends are getting to the end of Netflix, and yet their marriages remain the same. I mean, we just have to ask ourselves these things. We're not talking about sin right now. We're not talking about something that is evil, but what we are talking about something that is perhaps not making the best use of our time. And we have to ask ourselves, what, what have they done for us lately? What, what value is it really adding to our life? Here's the deal. I have social media. Um, I'm in a fantasy football small group like with these dudes. I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? But I just kind of add people in there, and every now and then I win, okay? The favor of God. Favor ain't fair. But hey, here's the deal. Like it just, I just kind of do it, but it's not, it's not consuming a great deal of my time, and I have to wonder if our future selves would thank us for going, you know what? Thank you for making some space in your schedule to spend time with God. I mean, we give a great deal of time to some apps and some streaming services and some people and some ambitions, and in light of what we struggle with in life, I have to ask ourselves this question is, man, hear my heart on this. I get emails, I get messages, I get phone calls with marriages that are on the rocks, with people that are fighting depression on a daily basis in light of what's happening in your home, in light of what's happening with your kids and their friends at their school and in their homes. I have to wonder what would happen if we gave the God of the impossible just a little bit more of our time. Would not we walk away with a brand new perspective, perhaps a brand new attitude, perhaps a whole new swag, a whole new perspective on 2020 if we would just spend a little bit more time with the God that loves us? I think it could change the game, and I think it could change your life. So today, the first thing, the first thing I want to do is I want to give you three ways to spend time with God. I know there's a lot of people that are watching this message, a lot of people that are here today that are going, man, I, man, I, I do, I, I get it. I, I, I do need to spend more time with God, especially in light of everything that I'm facing. But sometimes people just go, how? Well, it, I think it's pretty simple. Number one, it's prayer. It's talking to God. It's waking up in the morning and just putting him first. And, and, and if you really... If you find prayer really complicated, guess what? There's an app for that. Okay, it's the Eagle Brook Church app. We've got some prayers on there, some devotions, some things that can, can guide you along the way. I'd encourage you, download the app. It will help your prayer life. Number two, it's reading scripture. This is learning about God. Who is God and what is his character like? And maybe you've been told your whole life that God is this God that is angry with you, that it wants to zap you. But if you really begin to read it, you might find that he's a little bit different than what you've been taught. And guess what? There's an app for that too. You version. I mean, again, these, there's devotionals on there. It will actually ping you and send you a notification. Say, hey, read your Bible right now, 9 a.m., let's go. You know, I mean, and it will help you stay on track. And the third way I believe that we can spend time with God and connect with God is through worship. 
And this is responding to what we've learned about God. So let's say you're reading in scripture that God is this awesome God. Well, at some point, you're, you're going to want to respond to that awesome God. At some point, you're going to realize that you have received an amazing amount of forgiveness. You're going to want to go, man, God, thank you so much. And a lot of times this is singing or some form of, of a physical uh, expression to God to thank him for what he has done in our lives. And guess what? There's an app for that, too. It's called YouTube, okay? Like, you can find tons of great music. Eagle Brooks put out some great music, Hillsong. There's, there's tons of great worship music on YouTube, and sometimes you just, you just put that on. And, and here's what I've learned about these three. Um, in fact, when I was a student, I was taught this is the three-legged stool, Prayer, reading scripture, and worship. And these kind of bring balance in your life. But what I've discovered is that for most Christians, there's usually one that resonates more than another. There are some people that can pray all day. I mean, they, they, you, know, you ever met that Christian that wakes up at four in the morning talking to God for four hours and they meet you at eight o'clock? Like, what you been doing this morning? I was asleep. Dude, you've been praying all morning. Like some people just love going on walks into the woods with God. I don't like going into the woods. I am afraid of the woods. I talk to God in the shower, okay? Like, so, like, like everybody's kind of got their thing. Some people love to just pray. Other people, um, they really connect with God through Scripture. When they begin to read Scripture, God, they, they begin to connect with God more. They love studying the nuances of the text. They can get lost in a commentary for hours. It's how they truly connect with God. And then there's some people like myself, I connect with God mostly through singing and worship. If you were to ask my wife, she goes, Ryan's always humming a tune, uh, driving here. I was not praying. I was singing. I was worshiping. I, I, I was just responding to how good God is. And that's how I predominantly connect with God. I think we need all three in our life, but usually there's going to be one that resonates with you the most. So which one for you? And honestly, if you don't know, practice all three. Now, what I want to move into today in the next part of this message is there are three ways I believe spending time with God adds value to our future selves. And the first one is this. It's less distractions and more direction. Less distractions, more direction. I love uh, what it says in Psalms 119. David said, he said, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I love this scripture because it uncomplicates what sometimes we make complicated about trying to understand what God wants us to do in the future. Again, we're talking about what our future selves will thank us for, okay? So I love that he said, your word is a lamp unto my feet. I imagine it kind of like a lantern, that uh, lanterns only illuminate what's right in front of you. Some of us are trying to figure out where we're supposed to be in five years, but I can only imagine if we were people that would just open up God's word on a daily basis, we would not have to figure out what we're supposed to do in five years. Maybe we just need to get God's direction on what we're supposed to do tomorrow, what we're supposed to do next week, because uh, sometimes we can't always see what God is up to in the world way far future, but I can only challenge us to do this this week, to go, Lord, what are you up to this week? What do you want to do in my life this week? I dare you. <laughs> Open up some scripture today. I said, man, before I get my week started, Lord, what's next? Where, where, what direction do you want me to go? I read some interesting data this week, and it says this, says back in the 70s, it was reported that the average person saw between 500 to 1,600 ads per day. In 2007, uh, it went from 5,000 ads every single day. And today, they say that the average person is now estimated to encounter between 6,000 to 10,000 ads every single day. That means that you and I were prone and exposed to around 70,000 advertisements this week. I mean, we are constantly bombarded with institutions that are trying to shape our thinking to tell us who to date and how to dress and 
and, and who to vote for and, and where to work and where to live. And we're constantly being bombarded. And then we're shocked that we don't know what to do next. Because we have, again, spent our time getting everyone else's opinion about what we should do next, that we've not taken the time to take those things to God. In fact, I believe that we can talk and think about a lot and pray about very little. I love what it says in Proverbs chapter 3. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I mean, whenever you're trying to figure out if you should go on a date with that person, whenever you're trying to figure out what you should do with that job, should I stay or should I go? When you're trying to figure out what school you should go to, whenever, whenever you find yourself at a crossroads of making a decision, our natural inclination is to turn to our best friends or perhaps our family members, and those people are great. But I can only imagine what your future self would tell you if you started going to God first and getting his direction. I mean, how many game-changing decisions have we made without God's input? I mean, here's what I believe. If you will give God your attention, he will give you his direction. If you'll just pause just for a moment, if you'll just hit do not disturb just for a moment and just pause your life long enough to go, Lord, I know I got a lot of opinions about what I'm supposed to do and where I'm supposed to go, but God, you have my attention. Uh, my friend, uh, he just went on vacation to, to California and he, newlywed, went to the beach and he's just enjoying the sunrise and just and just having a great time. And he said he saw three teenagers come to the beach and he said for three hours, they were on their phones the entire time. They never looked up to see the beauty that was right in front of them. And my friend, I wonder if we find ourselves in similar situations where we just don't take the time to go, Lord, you have my attention and I'm actually paying attention to what you're doing around me. I think when we do it, we'd be surprised what God will speak loud and clear on. The second thing that I, I believe um, we get a lot of value from when we spend time with God is we end up with less grudges and more forgiveness. I love what it says in Ephesians. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. I mean, it's like Paul's writing this letter to the church of Ephesus. He's going, this isn't you. Slant? No, no, no. That's, that's not us. Then he goes, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. I mean, when we begin to spend more time with God, we begin to realize just how much grace and forgiveness we've actually been given. What I've learned about spending time with God is it's easier to give amazing grace when you've been a recipient of amazing grace. The more time you spend with God, the better you're going to treat other people around you because you're going, man, how, how can I go spend time with this forgiving, loving God and then go treat my neighbor like they're trash? That, make, that makes no sense. It's going, wait a minute, I've, I've, been, I've been given something that I do not deserve and so, you know what, I should probably extend that to others that I think don't deserve it. In fact, I want you to think about this just for a minute. It's only amazing grace when we don't want to give it. I mean, just think about that for a second. I mean, if we're going to really call it amazing grace, I mean, for it to be amazing, it's got to go, uh, you don't deserve it. That's why we go, yeah, but we're going we're gonna to give it. Anyways, we're going to give you what you don't, what I don't believe you deserve. When you spend more time with God, it's going to be easier to let go of some grudges. This weekend, what I believe our future selves will thank us for is for forgiving the people that have hurt us in our past. Here's what I know about you. Here's what I know about me. Is there are some future relationships that God wants us to have that he does not want us to bring baggage into. And maybe this weekend, maybe it's unexpected for you. Maybe you didn't think that, you know, on October 11th that you would be letting go of something that has, has 
waited your life for so long. But October 11th could be the best day of your life. It could be the day that you actually make a decision to say, you know what? I don't want my future self to have regrets of holding on to a grudge. And maybe it's time that I figure out a way that, Lord, is it possible that I could actually move on? I love what it says. And scripture says, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate us. Ladies and gentlemen, sin is what separates us from God, yet Jesus came and closed that gap for you and for me. And he's going, nothing's going to separate us because my love has covered a multitude of sins. And here's what's funny. We will allow separation to come between us and someone we love, not for sinning against us, but for merely disagreeing with us. We'll go, oh, no, what, what? We don't see that the same? Oh, let me give you some space. No. Man, when you spend time with God, you're going, you're going to find yourself giving people a lot more breaks than you would if you didn't spend time with God. As it pertains to the person that is tough to forgive, as it pertains to the person that has done something that you have found egregious, I just want to ask you a, a, a very non-threatening question. Have you prayed about it? I mean, have you really submitted that to prayer? This summer, I had a friend that crossed a line that I felt was extremely disrespectful, that if I told you the full narrative, you would probably come to the conclusion that hostility should have been involved and that I should be outraged. And I felt that. That was real for me. And then I prayed about it. And when I prayed about it, it pointed to this sore spot that it just was, hey, you, you, need, you need to forgive, right? And can I tell you something about forgiveness? It, it's not a one-time decision. Sometimes you got to wake up weekly and go, yeah, I'm still forgiving you. Uh, I, this, this is a working process, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still in motion on this, but I, I'm still... Letting God be my healer on that and not expecting a human to do something for me that only a God can. So yeah, I'm going to release them, let them off the hook and go to God who is my actual source. So yes, when you spend time with God, what your future self is going to find is that you had less grudges and more forgiveness. The last thing that I believe spending time with God adds value to our future selves is number three, less anxiety, more peace. I mean, who in the room, who watching online, who watching at one of our locations couldn't use a little bit more peace? I love what it says in 1 Peter. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Ladies and gentlemen, can you just hear this from your heavenly father today? He wants to spend time with you. We're his children. He, he wants to spend time with you, and he wants us to bring the things that weigh us down to him. I know that the year 2020 has been a year of loss. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people have lost loved ones. Some people have lost their sanity. <laughs> Some, some, of, some people might be honest and say that 2020 was a year where they lost their faith. Man, can I encourage you this weekend? Would you go to God and give him the things that keep you up at night, the things that have been robbing you of sleep? Would you cast that on to him? Would you... He wants to carry those things today. I mean, maybe you've just been paralyzed by fear of 
the future and what's going to happen next and when is this going to be over and what's the next four years going to look like and what's going to happen with my kids and what's going to happen with my job. Can I tell you that when you begin to spend time with God, you're going to realize something about God that is amazing. And it's this. God is not worried about the future. He's not. God in his entire existence has never had a nail-biting moment ever. He has never been nervous. You ain't never going to find God Almighty up there. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Oh no, those Americans, what are we going to do? No. That's not God. God's cool, calm, and collective, and all-powerful. He sees it all, and he's got the whole world in his hands. One of my mentors and pastors in my life, a guy named, a guy named Ricky, every time I call him freaking out, he has this frustrating peace about him. He's just always calm. One time I called him freaking out. I'm like, so what are we going to do? He's like, about what? I'm like, the thing. I said, Ricky, what are you doing right now? He's like, I'm gardening. I'm like, you're gardening? I feel like the world's on fire. He's like, it's not. And where there are fires, there are firemen. And then we put water on it. We'll be okay. I think that's what happens when we spend time with God. I believe his character rubs off on us. And we won't find ourselves freaking out as much about the things that are going on around us. Our God is not shaken. And if he's not shaken, then maybe we don't need to be either. I love what Jesus said. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light is there anybody in 2020 that couldn't use a little bit of rest for their souls it just feels like a weary year and i just i just love jesus call me crazy but i just i just feel i'm just inviting eagle brook church just going hey come come to me anyone else you think can save you cannot they do not have savior capabilities. They're just humans. None of them can save you. Jesus is going, come to me and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy. The word yoke was a term that rabbis used um, in Jesus' day as a, their interpretation of scripture. There were many rabbis who made uh, connecting with God really, really difficult. A lot of hoops to jump through. Lots of commandments to follow. And here's what you can do on the Sabbath. And here's what you can't do. And here's the amount of meters you need to stay away from a leper. I mean, there was all of these rules. And if you followed all of those rules, then, then maybe you had a chance at connecting with God. And Jesus is coming on the scene and he's going, hey, I know you have had a lot of heavy yokes in your life, but let me just tell you, my yoke is easy. And I want to give you rest. You're not going to find rest for your soul. Scraping the corners of the streaming world of Netflix. But your future self will find rest for its soul. Spending more time with God. Man, every single one of us is going to do something over the next five years. We're going to spend our time doing something. We're going to spend our time working, sleeping, eating, uh, connecting with friends, on social media, watching. I mean, you're going to spend the next five years of your life doing something. Man, if I'm you, I make sure I carve out as much time with God as I possibly can. Uh, for me, uh, I'm constantly looking in my schedule for more time to spend with God. And for me, that, that, looks, like, that looks like worship. And what I, I've learned about spending more and more time with God um, in worship is it sort of develops a muscle in you of response to tough situations. 
uh, one of my favorite songs is uh, King of My Heart. And it's, it's got some, some words in it that I think are so powerful um, because when you worship, you're making a declaration from your body to your situation. So you're making a declaration that's going, okay, this is how I'm going to frame this situation. And so there are moments in my life where it, it, this has really become the theme song of my life. That no matter what's going on, I just, I just sing this song. I mean, it's just one of those things that just changes everything for me. I mean, it's simple. It's like, and you're never going to let, never going to let me down. And there's something about saying that out loud when you're going through a situation where you feel like God could let you down. And then you get to, you know, and you are good, good, oh, oh, yes, you are good, good, oh, oh. I sing this song annoyingly too much in my house. So much so that like when I sing it, I be adding the drums, okay? I be adding everything. Like you are good, good. And one time I was, um, my son was sick and I was like, I, I just had him in my hands and I, I was changing his diaper and I was just singing, you are good, good, oh. And all of a sudden my three-year-old, he goes, I'm like, yeah, you know what time it is. It's the theme song of my home. You see, I want my son to grow up in the future him. I want him when he finds himself in a dark place to go, you are good. When it doesn't make sense. I mean, sometimes it's easy to sing that song when things are going really good. You know, when you've been watching your kids all summer long and you found out you could put them in school, you was like, you are good. <laughs> uh, but then the, uh, the other night, uh, my wife um, found herself um, in the ER and uh, non-COVID related and she, she's fine now, but I had to stay with the kids and my mother-in-law had to go with her to the ER um, at two in the morning and there was nothing that I could do and I wanted to do everything in my power as a husband to be there with my wife and I couldn't because I've got our two young ones and I'm just going, you are good, good. Oh, I mean, b before you know what's going to happen, it's just my response to life. And if I'm honest, I'm trying to think of a situation where that song is not appropriate. Because when will there be a moment in our life where we find that God is not good? You are good. Because he is, even when it doesn't look like it, even when we've got trouble all around us. It's the theme song of my life. For some people, it's not a song. For some people, it's a prayer. They have a theme prayer that they lean on in tough times. For some people, they got a scripture that they go to, a verse that they go to, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I mean, like they just have that thing. Do you have one? Because this is what happens when you spend time with God. You're going to find yourself in a battle at some point in your life. Person on your right, person on your left is perhaps fighting a battle you know nothing about. Do you have something, a go-to move in that moment where you just go, we're going to be all right. I'm not going to freak out. I trust that the God of the impossible, I've spent so much time with him that I trust that everything is going to work out at every location. I want us to stand to our feet. And we're going to sing this song. We're going to sing it together. And I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if you find yourself in a good time or a bad time. But can I tell you something? Our God is still good. And your future self will thank you for having moments just like this. Let's sing together.
Let's pray. 
God, you are good. Plain and simple, you are good. God, we ask you to remind us of that every single day. As we walk out of this place, as we go about the rest of our day, would you just remind us that no matter what we're walking through, you are good. God, we want less distractions. We want more forgiveness. We want more peace. And we know that you are the one who gives it to us. So God, we ask for that. As we spend more and more time with you, God, that you would remind us of each and every one of those things. God, you are a God we can trust. So we ask you to show up when we show up to time with you. God, that we would never regret it. And our future self would thank us when we spend time with you, God. So we thank you for all you're doing in our lives and all you're gonna continue to do in us and through us because you are good. So Jesus, it's all these things that we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, everybody, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us online, joining us right here in the room. Uh, if you need prayer for any reason, we have people out in our Next Steps area here at our Lino campus, but also let us know in the, in the chat if there's any way we can be praying for you online. Uh, but if you're here in the room, we just ask that you remain seated uh, and, and we'll just miss you by row, but we hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. We'll see you next weekend as we start the series, Divided States of America. Thanks, everybody.